Russian officials held local elections in parts of occupied Ukraine yesterday. Voting took place in the parts of four Ukrainian regions that are currently under Russian occupation. The regions include Donetsk, Luhansk, Zaporizhia and Kherson. Residents in the eastern Ukrainian city of Mariupol were seen casting their votes. Moscow says it is certain that residents will vote for pro-Russian mayors once voting ends on the 10th of September. Meanwhile, Russian Foreign Minister Sergei Lavrov hosted his Turkish counterpart yesterday. The two leaders met in Russia's capital, Moscow. Their meeting comes ahead of a summit scheduled between Russia's President Vladimir Putin and Turkey's President Recep Tayyip Erdogan. Putin and Erdogan are slated to meet on the 4th of September. South Korea's Defense Minister arrived in Poland yesterday. He met his Polish counterpart in the capital, Warsaw. The leaders discussed the establishment of a production line for military equipment in Poland. Seoul aims to deepen military ties with Warsaw, and last year saw South Korea's largest defense export order. Seoul sold weapons worth over $13 billion to Warsaw. Sudan's Army Chief General Abdel Fateh Burhan met officers and soldiers yesterday. During his interaction, he said, and I quote, if the war is not resolved quickly, Sudan will be fragmented. However, immediately after making the remark, the general ruled out any potential peace talks with the rival paramilitary group, which is the Rapid Support Forces. Remember, the Sudanese army and RSF forces have been fighting since the 15th of April. The conflict has sent the North African nation into a humanitarian crisis. The African Union has suspended the membership of the Central African Nation of Gabon. This comes after the military conducted a coup in Gabon on the 30th of August. The African Union says Gabon is suspended from all activities and institutions of the African Union. Meanwhile, numerous cases filled with cash were confiscated from the homes of several Gabonese officials yesterday. This is as per the nation's state media. The media also reported that officials were caught hoarding the cash worked with President Ali Bongo. Gabon's military officials say that narcotics were also seized during the raids. Hundreds of women took to the streets of Karachi city in Pakistan. They protested outside government offices over soaring electricity prices. Some demonstrators set their electricity bills on fire and refused to pay them. Consumers in Pakistan have received steep power bills after a recent increase in taxes on electricity. Thailand's king has reduced the jail term of former Prime Minister Thaksin Shinawatra. The sentence has been reduced to just one year. Earlier, the former Thai Prime Minister was looking at a jail time of up to eight years. Remember, Thaksin returned to Thailand last month after spending 15 years in exile. Pope Francis arrived in Mongolia today. He will be in the East Asian nation for the next four days. The Pope is scheduled to meet Mongolia's Catholic population during the trip. Mongolia has a small population of just 1,450 Catholics. Papua New Guinea has opened its embassy in Israel. The diplomatic mission was inaugurated in Jerusalem. Papua New Guinea's Prime Minister will arrive in Israel on the 5th of September to attend a formal ceremony. More than 150 schools in the UK have been ordered to shut down. This is after the buildings of the schools were declared unsafe. Officials say some of the schools are in such poor condition that the concrete was crumbling and falling off. The school's closure comes just days before students were to return to classrooms after their summer holidays. Brazil's President Lula da Silva launched a campaign to beat poverty in his country. The campaign, which has been named Brazil Without Hunger, was flagged, yes, flagged off rather, yesterday. It aims to improve the quality of food that is available to Brazilians. According to a UN report, at least 36% of Brazilians cannot afford a nutritious diet. Two car explosions were reported in Ecuador's capital, Quito, yesterday. 
Police officials say bombs were used to target Ecuador's Ministry of Women and Human Rights. Six people were arrested in relation to the explosion and no injuries have been reported. In climate, preparation for Typhoon Soala is underway in China. According to China's National Meteorological Center, the typhoon could make landfall on Friday night or Saturday. Over 100,000 people have been evacuated from danger zones. China has also issued its highest typhoon warning. Meanwhile, schools have been shut and flights have been grounded in Hong Kong. A new drone footage shows the aftermath of Typhoon Idalia in the US state of Florida. Several houses were destroyed and vehicles were seen submerged in flood water. Debris and flattened structures were seen throughout Florida's Horseshoe Beach. Meanwhile, analysts say Idalia could become the costliest climate disaster to hit the US this year. It can have massive implications for insurance and risk management industries. The cost of destruction could be somewhere around $10 billion. And this is based on early estimates from analysts at financial firm UBS. India witnessed its driest August in more than a century. It received 36% less rainfall than normal in 2023. This is as per India's weather department. Meanwhile, the country is estimated to receive average rainfall in the month of September. Almost all of Australia will experience unusually warm temperatures this spring. It will also receive lower than average rainfall. This is as per Australia's Bureau of Meteorology. It expects the climate to be drier and hotter than, than usual. South Korean residents have condemned Japan's move to dump wastewater from the Fukushima nuclear power plant into the ocean. They've called it unnecessary and irresponsible. Residents fear that this will have an adverse impact on their seafood industry. Despite widespread criticism, Japan started dumping the water from Fukushima into the Pacific Ocean last week. Iceland's government has said that it will resume hunting fin whales. This comes after a two-month halt. However, the government has rolled out new guidelines and where Iceland has asked that the whales be killed as quickly as possible to reduce their suffering. Now on to business and tech news. British retailer Next will strengthen its control of UK fashion house Reese. Next will acquire further acquire rather 34% of the fashion brand. This was previously held by US investment firm Warburg Pincus. Next is buying the stake for $162 million. Clothing giant Forever 21 says it was hacked earlier this year. The retailer said that the breach affects more than half a million individuals. This included their name, date of birth and bank account number. It has also risked the information of current and former Forever 21 employees. Information regarding health plans, including enrollment and premiums paid, have been compromised. Dating app Bumble has updated its community guidelines. With the new rules, it aims to crack down on bots, spam, ghosting and toxin. The new policy will apply to its dating app Badoo along with Bumble. The dating app is also adding clauses to prohibit adult content on its apps. US Treasury Secretary Janet Yellen has confirmed that she will participate in the upcoming G20 summit. She will be traveling to India's capital, New Delhi, from the 7th of September to the 10th of September. At the summit, Yellen intends to focus on strengthening the global economy and enhancing bilateral ties with India. This will be her fourth visit to India in 10 months. India's economy grew at its fastest pace in a year in the first quarter. The country's GDP expanded 7.8% on an annual basis. This is an acceleration from the previous quarter's growth of 6.1%. This was driven by strong services activity and robust demand. 
the Indian conglomerate Vedanta reportedly ran a covert lobbying campaign to weaken key environmental regulations. This was during the COVID-19 pandemic. Moreover, Vedanta's oil business also successfully lobbied to have public hearings scrapped for exploratory drilling. Financial firm UBS will ax 3,000 jobs in Switzerland. This comes as a part of its cost-cutting measures. UBS expects to save more than $10 billion in costs by the end of 2026. This is much higher than its initial estimate. Initially, UBS had predicted to cut its costs by $8 billion by 2027. Ride-hailing firm Uber has launched electric motorbike services in Kenya. This is its first in Africa. It will roll out 3,000 bikes within the first six months. Uber says this will help drivers cut their operating costs by 30 to 35 percent. Users will also have to pay 15 to 20 percent less than what they do for a regular Uber motorbike trip. Danish online job search company Job Index has filed a lawsuit against Google. This is over copyright violations. Job Index has accused Google of copying its job ads without permission. It wants compensation and damages for the alleged violations. An Austria-based advocacy group has filed complaints against Google's Google-owned Fitbit. It has accused the fitness tracking company of violating the European Union's data protection laws. The group said that Fitbit forces its users to consent to data transfers outside the EU. It also allegedly does not give users the option to withdraw their consent. Moving to sports, we start with cricket. Ishan Kishan will replace KL Rahul for India's Asia Cup opener against Pakistan. Kishan is set to play as a wicket keeper and middle order batter for the men in blue. Meanwhile, KL Rahul is still recovering from an injury and he has been ruled out for the first two matches of the tournament. India will play their first Asia Cup match against arch rivals Pakistan tomorrow. In football, UEFA announced the 2023 Player of the Year awards on Thursday. Erling Haaland of Manchester City has been named the 2022-2023 Men's Player of the Year. The 23-year-old netted 52 goals in 53 games across all competitions. Meanwhile, Aitana Bonmati was awarded the Women's Player of the Year title. The 25-year-old midfield from Spain took home the Golden Ball Prize at the FIFA Women's World Cup. Lionel Messi will lead Argentina in their opening World Cup qualifiers. World Cup champions Argentina host Ecuador on the 17th of September in Buenos Aires. They will then travel to Bolivia for their next match. In tennis, world number two, Carlos Alcaraz entered round three at the US Open. The 20-year-old Spaniard beat South Africa's Lloyd Harris 6-3, 6-1 and 7-6. Alcaraz is the defending champion of the US Open and he faces Britain's Dan Evans in the next round. World number 5, Ons Jabor of Tunisia, also progressed to round 3 of the US Open. Her second round opponent, Linda Noskova of the Czech Republic, put up a fierce battle. But Jabor had rattled, battled rather past her to seal her victory 7 6, 4 6, and 6 3. In Formula 1, Red Bull racer Max Verstappen is eyeing his record 10th con consecutive win. The Dutchman is looking to make history this weekend, that is, if he wins the Italian Grand Prix. Red Bull has managed to win every race this season, and Verstappen could become the first racer to have registered 10 victories in a row. Lewis Hamilton has extended his contract with Mercedes until 2025. This means he will be driving for Mercedes in the next two F1 seasons. Hamilton started his career with McLaren and joined Mercedes in 2013. The 38-year-old holds a record-high 103 race wins in Formula 1. In athletics, ace Indian javelin thrower Neera Chopra has qualified for the Diamond League final. Chopra was in action in Zurich, Switzerland yesterday and he finished second. He began with a modest throw of 80.79, 80 
which put him in the second place. After fouling in a couple of rounds, Neeraj Chopra finally achieved his best of the day. He logged 85.71 meters in his last throw. The Diamond League final will be held in the city of Ugin, in the US state of Oregon, in September. Meanwhile, Indian long jumper Murali Sri Shankar has also qualified for the Diamond League final. He finished fifth in the long jump event at Zurich. Sri Shankar leaped a distance of 7.99 meters. He earned four qualifying points to seal his berth in the Diamond League final. America's Noah Lyles won in the 200 meter race at the Diamond League in Zurich. He finished the finish line in 19.80 seconds. The race was a neck-to-neck -neck battle between Lyles and his American compatriot, Arion Knighton. Knighton clocked a time of 19.77 seconds. In the world of entertainment, the first episode of the podcast series Strike Force 5 aired yesterday. It features five of America's top late-night show hosts. The purpose of the show is to highlight the ins and outs of the ongoing writers and actors strike. It will run for 12 episodes and the podcast features Stephen Colbert, John Oliver, Jimmy Kimmel, Jimmy Fallon and Seth Meyers. Celebrities Oprah Winfrey and Dwayne The Rock Johnson have launched a fund to raise money for wildfire hit Hawaii. The two superstars have already committed $10 million to rebuild homes in Hawaii's Maui Island. Oprah and Dwayne Johnson say they will also give $1,200 rather to people in Maui who were staying on rent and have no place to go. Actor Adam Sandler has achieved his highest ratings on the reviewing platform Rotten Tomatoes. Sandler's latest Netflix release, You Are So Not Invited to My Bath Mitzvah, has stopped the reviews among among all his movies. The new release has received a 96% approval rating on Rotten Tomatoes. Sandler's second best reviewed movie is the 2022 basketball drama Hustle, which got a 93% approval rating. Rapper Post Malone shared a new health update with his fans. The musician took to social media to share his body transformation update. Post Malone says he has been on a journey to lose weight and added that he reduced his weight from over 100 kilograms to 80 kilograms. Pop star Taylor Swift is bringing her era's true to the big screen. Taylor Swift made the announcement on social media platform Twitter, also known as X. Shows of the concert will now be played across cinemas in North America starting on the 13th of October. Tickets for adults will cost almost $20. Singer Beyonce was named mayor for a day in Santa Clara City in the American state of California. This was after she performed in the city during her ongoing Renaissance tour. After receiving the honor, Beyonce said that it was a special day. Rapper 50 Cent threw a microphone into the audience during his Los Angeles concert. The microphone hit a concert goer on the forehead. She was rushed to the hospital after receiving a gruesome wound that wouldn't stop doing blood. After the concert goer was discharged, she filed a case against 50 Cent for assault and battery. Rappers Eminem and Machine Gun Kelly were on the hit list of the racist Jacksonville shooter. On the 26th of August, three people were killed in a racially motivated shooting in the US state of Florida. Now, police officials investigating the incident have published a report and the report reveals that Jacksonville shooters alleged hit list. Police officials say the shooter left a message for Eminem that read, Slim Shady is to be killed on sight. Singer Ricky Martin and partner Juan Yosef have reached a settlement two months after they filed for divorce. The former couple have reached a, to a written agreement to equally divide their property and the custody rights of their two children. The duo filed for divorce after being married for over seven years. And finally, Jack Sonny, the guitarist for, 
for the rock band Dire Straits has died at the age of 68. The band's official Facebook page made the announcement yesterday. The rock group spokesperson said the guitarist died due to several health problems. Jack Sonny performed some of his most iconic guitar verses for Dire Straits. This includes tracks like Brothers in Arms, Money for Nothing and Walk of Life. Hello, Namaskar. This is First Post, and you're watching Vantage with me.